HyperCycle is a ledgerless blockchain solution created to process extremely high throughput at minimal cost, making it a perfect building block for a decentralized AGI architecture. But how does it actually work, a ledgerless blockchain? And is HyperCycle still useful after the ASI merger? Let's talk about it in this video. First, let's answer the question if HyperCycle is still needed and useful. And we can answer that with a clear yes. Especially since HyperCycle strives to be applied for a vast amount of different use cases and not just AI technology. And it's also not just limited to singularity net. But also when it comes to ASI, Ben Goertzel talked in a recent AMA about how HyperCycle could be the super fast underlying communication layer of the whole ASI network. But have a listen to it for yourself. This becomes a very exciting opportunity for NuNet and HyperCycle in, in that you know, we, we now have all the processing from fetch and ocean networks, which can be farmed out to decentralized processors in, in the new net network. And HyperCycle, which Tufi calls a layer zero plus plus, you know, that, that can serve as a way of just mediating communication between any two parties on a, on a decentralized network. So I think, I think there's an opportunity to roll out HyperCycle as the base level communication mechanism across the whole ASI network. I was just talking with Humayun uh, from Fetch about that late, late last night. And I mean, he's quite pumped about what we can do with HyperCycle as a super fast decentralized communication mechanism across the whole ASI network. I mean, we we need HyperCycle to be a little more advanced in 1.0 version before we can we can do that. I mean, there's very cool stuff working there right now, which is being used for some applications, but it's not it's not rolled out in a fully packaged up way. So that we we can't use it as the basis for ASI now. But once it's ready, I mean, this is a great opportunity for rolling out. HyperCycle and, and NuNet at scale. So I don't know what you think, but I definitely think this sounds amazing for HyperCycle and its future use case. HyperCycle's strong side is a really, really fast and low cost transaction throughput. And let's just say if Hyperon, the AGI project they are working on, just gets a fraction of the users that ChatGPT has, you definitely need to be able to process a lot of transactions very very fast. Now, how does HyperCycle do that? And what the heck is a ledgerless blockchain? Let's look into that. HyperCycle basically consists out of a network of different nodes. And when there's a transaction request, a throughput that happens, these nodes come together and form a ring. Well, not all of these nodes, but whatever nodes at the moment work best together. They form a ring and this ring basically processes the throughput. The different nodes process the throughput extremely fast and it gets written in the transaction history of that single node. Now the whole ring adapts this same transaction history, but one node at the beginning of course processes the transaction very fast and then it gets adapted by the whole ring. Not by all the nodes in the system though, just by the ring. And then the transaction throughput happens, the nodes write that into their history. And then when that transaction throughput is over, the ring splits up again. So let's just make arrows here. It splits up, as you can see. And then when another request happens, these nodes come together and form a new ring with other nodes probably, whichever at the moment work best together. So let's say, one of these nodes with the transaction history forms a ring together with other nodes who all have their own separate transaction history. So let's make that with red just to make it clear that they all have their 
separate and different transaction histories from whichever rings they have been in before. So the transaction history gets sharded. Then they process the new throughput. One node processes the transaction very fast. Uh, after a while, the whole ring records that transaction history. And then after that throughput is over, the ring again splits up, shards the transaction history even further. And when another throughput is needed, a new ring gets formed. That's basically how hypercycle works, or at least how I understand it. Now, what prevents a malicious actor from creating a bunch of nodes, overtaking the network and resulting in bad throughput? I'm glad you asked. The answer is the proof of reputation consensus mechanism that hypercycle uses. The way hypercycle works is that nodes who have good transaction history over a long period of time get chosen for the throughput that happens. So let's say, let's just say this node here has great reputation over a long period of time, then this node will get preferred for the throughput and also for more critical throughput that happens in the network. Thanks to the proof of reputation, it basically gets a higher and higher reputation and will get chosen for more and more throughput and basically get a better and higher capacity to earn more. When a new node comes in, first it will get only a few transactions that are not critical basically to start proving itself. But when it comes to proving yourself, it doesn't always have to be malicious. You also need to prove that you can run 24-7 and keep the network stable so it doesn't result in any failed transactions. So basically these nodes accumulate a better reputation over time, which results in more transactions and more critical transactions, which results in the capacity to earn more. That's basically how the proof of reputation consensus mechanism works. And by the way, if I didn't understand anything fully quite right, or you think, wait, I understand that differently, please let me know in the comments and let's discuss. And what now is the meaning of the term Internet of AI? Well, the goal of hypercycle is basically that all AI agents that are connected to the network can communicate with each other very, very fast. And of course, for that, fast communication and low cost throughput is necessary. Also, they very specifically state on their website that everyone can partake in the hypercycle network. And right here you can get a note if that sounds interesting for you. But I would highly recommend you do more of your own research beforehand. If you think the combination of AI and blockchain is as interesting as I do, then I would highly recommend you watch a video right over there where I break down a research paper that talks about the fourth industrial revolution being led by AI and blockchain. See you right over there. And this time I forgot to write the like there. So if you're still watching, it would be great if you could like the video. Thank you.